Welcome everyone to our guest expert interview of the month for our Keto Lifestyle crew. Today we have, back by popular demand, April Smith. Woohoo! So our crew members know, if you're watching as a crew member, you all remember her from our retreat we had in the spring. And uh, for those of you that are watching this uh, recording later on, uh, April, will you just tell everyone else that doesn't know you a little bit about your, your background, why we're so excited to have you here today? Well, thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be back. I had such a great weekend with you guys during the retreat. We did a little moving together. We did a little cooking together. Um, and I just loved participating and uh, getting to know some of you. So thank you for having me back. So I am a, I've got a couple different letters behind my name, a certified personal trainer, a functional aging specialist, and a Pilates expert for older bodies, older adults. And I sort of put myself in that category as a recently turned 50 year old woman. So I say Pilates for mature bodies. And um, so I do all of that in my everyday life and I have um, an online program as well. And I've been doing this work for the past 18 years. Wonderful. And you're joining us. I'm gonna check the audio here. We're doing auto adjust. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, and you're in Alabama, right? I am. I am on the very southernmost part of Alabama. We call it LA, Lower Alabama. Okay. <laughs> so right on the coast, on the uh, right on the water. All right. And if you're joining us, I can see we've got somebody watching uh, from the Facebook group. So if you'd like to let us know who you are, I can't see who you are unless you actually do a comment. So feel free to join us. Uh, let us know you're here and um, where you're joining us from. And we'll... Uh, any questions you've got for April, go ahead and pop them in the in the comment box, chat box there as well too. So, um, so April, we we connected um, through business group, but it also turns out that you have a keto background as well, your own journey. Would you please share with us what uh, yeah. your keto journey? I would love to. So I have been following the keto diet, lifestyle, whatever, however you want to say it, for about five and a half years. And um, I feel like I started way back when where like there just wasn't all this fabulous info out there about it. You know, I went through when I when I started it, I had the keto flu for like five straight days. Now mm -hmm. we know and I'm sure you guide your, you know, your people that come through your program through what to do. But I didn't know what to do. So it was just like slug my way through the day and lay on the couch and then repeat. And eventually I got over that. But um, yeah, you know, the things that keto have, has done for me is one, I'm, so I'm now at 50 postmenopausal. Yay. <laughs> I mean, to me, that sounds like, you know, I feel like it should be later in life. But for me, it happened earlier. Or I guess that's normal, but it feels later. I mean, it feels earlier for me. Um, and that comes with all sorts of changes in what your body looks like and how your body feels. And keto has helped me maintain my weight. Um, it's helped me stay leaner. And, you know, as a fitness professional, what I hate this part, but what I look like to some degree matters to some people. Um, doesn't matter really mean, you know, what's up going on up here and what I've learned and how many years I bring to the table, but people look at you and they expect you to, to be a certain way. And so keto, um, it helps me stay the size that feels good to me and um, helps me stay fit. Um, it also helps me, you know, with my focus and brain fog and um, which is also something as we're getting older, we're experiencing more and more, at least I have been as I was losing all of my hormones going through menopause. Um, and, you know, I don't snack at night. I'm not in the but pre keto. I would be in the fridge, you know, nine o'clock shopping around. I, I didn't need anything in there, but I was just bored, craving, hungry. All of that has just gone away. And I try to recommend this way of eating to everybody that will listen to me <laughs> because it, you know, it's just made a huge impact on how I feel and how I look. Hmm. And obviously it works well for you that you've maintained it for five and a half years. So, you know, it is, it absolutely is. I have a um, partner in life, my boyfriend, 
um, Bill, he joined me when, when we started dating, he joined me on the keto journey. He's about three and a half years in. He lost 50 pounds, reduced his blood pressure so much that the doctor took him off one of his medications. Um, joints feel better, knees feel better. So we, it's a lifestyle that we live, um, you know, in our house every day. I do have a teenager that lives with me and um, he, he eats that way too. And then if he also wants to add something that wouldn't be, you know, something we eat into his diet, then he just has that as well, you know, but it is, it, we all do it in, in my house. Oh, it makes it so much more easy and sustainable when the whole house is on board. I know. Absolutely. And, you know, and, 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 and if he wants something, you know, a potato or something with his meal that we're not going to have, then he just eats it. No, there's no stress or worry or problems. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I remember when it was household with my son and his girlfriend and we were all on the same, same page and she would cook us uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So definitely makes it a lot easier. Um, and I'm so happy to hear all the health improvements that you all are experiencing too. So awesome. such a yeah. great example too. I mean, that's one of the things that people are up against all the time is they see all these articles that say how, oh, this is just, it's not sustainable. It's like, well, any, any uh, healthy dietary change takes work and dedication and commitment to it. Uh, no change is easy. <laughs> um, if you're going to change for health, then you're going to have to maintain that no matter what it is that you choose. So it's totally, you can, I mean, five and a half years later, yeah, I'm still here and I'm going to be here. I will stay yeah. here. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's much harder to eat only 1200 calories a day for the rest of your life than it is to uh, eat delicious foods that you, you enjoy. <laughs> and, and, and 1200 calories sucks. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just does. I was in the fridge at night looking on 1200, you know, 1200 calories, hungry and like yeah. irritated. Yeah. So how did you um, get interested in Pilates and then specifically, you know, the niche that you found in helping older uh, mature bodies? So, you know, 18 years of doing fitness and wellness and about half of those nine of those have been also including Pilates. Hmm. And, you know, I was always interested in it, but I really wanted to study under an expert. Um, I really think that kind of stuff matters. I'm not someone who would sign up for a weekend course and call myself, Hey, I'm certified. You can do that. But I don't think like, I don't, I just don't find any value in that. And so, um, about nine years ago, I found a master teacher that had a Pilates studio where she had the equipment in the Pilates world. They call that the apparatus. I've got a reformer behind me. You can see the, the bar a little bit behind me. And um, she had all the equipment and she was able to teach and um, like as a master teacher, she had years and years of experience. And so I was able to go into her studio and start learning under her. And then when she felt I had, you know, grasped enough of it she started letting me work with some students and start teaching and that's sort of how i got into that i've always worked with older adults um, one of my first clients was a man in his 80s he changed the like path that my um my career has gone on because instead of being concerned about how he looked in his bikini nothing wrong with that because I like to look good in my bathing suit too or you know instead of worrying about losing 20 pounds so you can fit in the size whatever all this guy wanted he had survived cancer was to live the best life he could for the rest of his life and when he became my client I realized that fitness didn't have to be that other stuff which was somewhat boring to me and it could be life-changing both for me and for other people and so i started seeking every older adult client i could get and that just turned into after i started and um, you know working and studying and becoming um able to teach pilates that really i just decided at some point i'm only going to work with women that are in their 50s 60s and 70s mm -hmm. and that's all i do these days i have one male client um primarily women that's my thing that's who i enjoy you know spending time with and helping and since i have nine years ago halfway through this journey of 18 years of this work since i've added that in pilates my clients bodies change not 
in the, the sense that, oh, look, you know, they're a perfect size six, but their knees move better, their hips feel better, their low backs don't hurt anymore. You know, they tell me these amazing stories. Like uh, on Friday, my client that's probably been with me about eight years, her name's Jeannie. She just out of nowhere, she's on the reformer. She said, you know, I really wish I had started Pilates sooner, sooner because I, she's and she's always worked out. She's very much an exerciser her whole life. And she said, I used to, um, you know, work out with a trainer and just do weights and stuff. But since I've been doing the Pilates, my back doesn't hurt anymore. Mm. She said, you know, I used to go cut the grass and my back would hurt. And she's like, mm. I just don't have that going on anymore. And she's a very dedicated several times a week student. And to me, to be able to help people just feel better, move better, um, as we are getting older and aging is um, an amazing thing to do. It's, a, it's, an, it's easy to get up in the morning and go to work. Yeah, so it sounds like you're just helping people with quality of life, uh, yes. stuff, just living a better pain-free life. It's um, moving good for all, you know, like we don't work out to work out, or I don't anyway, I don't know about other people. Most people don't work out to work out. They work out so they can kayak and paddleboard and go swimming with their grandchildren and hike on vacation. Those so, things. So for those people don't don't really know what Pilates is, what what is it and why is it so good for making your back not hurt? So Pilates has been around a long time, started, founded by Joseph Pilates. Um, and you know, I'll skip all the history stuff. You guys could look it up online. You can look up Joseph Pilates, but the stuff that's important is that it is a focus first on getting your core stronger. So all the things we do, we start from that, from that um, like lined up posture first, um, alignment of your spine position. And then we add the arms and the legs and the bigger movements in. And um, I always want to like do a quick share because a lot of people don't know when they get it wrong a lot of times. What is your core? And I'm going to make this very non-scientific and super fast, but you will remember it, I promise. So if you had a Barbie doll and you snapped her arms off and you snapped her legs off and you popped her head off like my mean brother did to my Barbies. <laughs> my brother did this, I swear. He really yeah. did. He's sweet now, but when we were little, he wasn't. So what's left to your Barbie if you take off all of that stuff? And what are you holding? You're holding her trunk, right? And simply the trunk of your Barbie doll is your core muscles. So if you think core is those six pack muscles that if you were lean enough, you could see them, that's it. It is those, but it's also the muscles on the side, the muscles of your back, your gluteal or your rear end, your pelvic floor muscles, something that is women that are 50, 60 and beyond worth for thinking about these days um, that support your organs. All of that front and back make up your core. Mm. So when you then take that, that idea of, okay, it's my trunk first, finding alignment, finding good posture so I don't look like this and don't shuffle around the grocery store, get it stronger. Then we start to add arms and legs in. Um, it creates just this, uh, you know, a, a way that you're moving in the world that is better and different, stronger, more confident, more resilient. I remember a, a friend of mine many years ago, also a Pilates instructor that shared a story similarly working with an, an older gentleman where he gained several inches of height uh, just because as we get older, our body doesn't have the strength to hold itself up correctly. So that was, uh, I'm, I, I'm betting you have uh, similar stories of. I, I absolutely do. I have a client whose name is Brenda and she made me this little testimonial video about how, and she's um, a, a, a shorter lady. She's like around five foot. And I guess at home she was measuring her height. I don't know if maybe she was concerned about, you know, losing height, but um, we'd been doing Pilates together a few years and she came in one day and she's like, I just want you to know I'm taller. I've measured <laughs> And I'm like, that's amazing, you know, like it's the little things in life, right? But it is the difference between, so if I scoot back, it is the difference between that sinking, mm -hmm. weak, rounded position, which this is a position that not only we don't want to, we don't like the way it looks, but it's a position that you could possibly fall if you're always mm -hmm. rounded over because your center of gravity, your middle is forward. 
um, and it changes it to this. And, you know, yeah, you can put yourself in this position for the most part, but you also have to do the work to get yourself stronger so you can maintain it easier. So that's all part of that, that stuff that we do as well. Mm, yeah. Well, um, did you have a couple of easy movements you were going to show us or what did you have planned for... Uh, would you like to do a little moving together? We certainly can. Um, to, I, is, I, today, right before this, I did my coaching call with my um, online program members, my mm -hmm. membership. Um, so I have a membership called Fit Women Over 60, and we do a monthly coaching call together. And we mm -hmm. always move together as well as, you know, explore what we've been doing in the past month. So we could maybe do a little bit of that if you guys wanted to. I've got a move my chair and move this ball. I've got a, I'm in my little potty studio. I need to move my ball and get it out of the way. So um, let me think about what we'll do here. But if you want to join me, let me adjust this. You don't need any equipment. Today we use the Pilates ring, but we'll skip it because probably most people don't have one of these, but these you can get and use and they're great. But you'll just need a little bit of um, room sitting in a chair and we'll start with um let's start with a room if, if you are on the um online retreat this is going to be a sort of a reminder but if you weren't it'll be a good um sort of remembering or starting with a posture first so let's do that really quickly and then we'll start moving from there so if our normal position is this with our phone or you know i don't know sitting in front of your computer click 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 or even driving Let's find better position. So how do you do that? So if you lift your chest up a little bit and you take your head on top of your shoulders and then the, your rib cage neck sitting directly on top of your pelvis, now you're in a more stacked up position. So you could do this in a chair. It would be exactly the same if you stood up, right? You would just be standing up. And then I like to think of when I'm in that position, Here's my collarbones. There's not an anatomy test, I promise, later, but here's my collarbones. Can I stay wide and broad across my collarbones? Because the opposite of wide and broad across my collarbones is sinking and rounded, right? So just a simple little idea of open my chest up a little bit, just puts me in a better position. Everything stacked, I would be neutral. Which April, means April, can I ask real quick right here? Yeah. Do you find, though, that people have gotten, as they age, a body position that they can't even tell they're not standing up straight? Um, I've noticed this in some people with that head forward position where, you know, their back's really rounded and they're they're just used to standing like that. And so they can't even tell they're not standing up fully straight. So is that something where you need somebody else just to take a look at you or maybe take a photo of yourself so you can you can really see? How, how do you how do you see yeah. when you're not in, in fully erect, uh, you know, stacked up body posture. Yeah, no, that's a really great point. I have this picture of, um, I was doing a challenge earlier this year and I was teaching that alignment and one of the people, one of the women going through it sent me these two photos. She had her husband take them and she said, um, and, and, and it, it, I mean, there was a startling difference. They were from the side. One was just this kind of position. And then the next was using sort of the cueing that I just gave you guys, how to like come out of it. And she said, I'm not always excessively like this, but sometimes when I'm not thinking about it, like I'm washing the dishes or, you know, I'm not paying attention. I just end up there. Mm -hmm. So you could have someone take a picture, you know, you could just find a comfortable position for you, how you normally are, and maybe have someone take a picture of you from the side. Um, you could come against a wall maybe and, uh, you know, come pretty close to it and put your back against it. How, how far forward is your head from being able to, you know, touch the back of the wall? And if you push your head on the wall, you push your chin up to do it. So a lot of times if we've got neck stuff going on, you know, trying to get our head retra retracted and pulled back ends up looking like this, you know, if, if we've been this way a long time. Uh, we're very much not conscious of what we've got going on here. The other very common thing that I see with a lot of women is, I always called it sway back, which is you have your shoulder blades back behind your, like my hips are here. 
Um, that feels terrible to my back, but we think, okay, I'm going to sit up tall and we end up like having to lean back to do it instead of being able to just kind of stack things up. Um, and it's, you're, we're net, I, I just want to emphasize, we are never going to be perfect. I'm here and I just, I fix it. Right. I just find it and fix it, get taller, get stronger. And I'm just, I'm just going to always work on it. Um, you, the, the thing you don't want to do is not be conscious of it. And then one day you look up and then getting out of this has become too hard, right? Mm. It's too much change. As we know, and this certainly would go for the keto diet, what we do all the time is what the, our result is going to be. So if we are like this for 70 years, then it's really hard to change this versus, mm. oh, I figured it out. I'm going to start to work on it a little bit, stretching it open and getting it stronger in the back. So. So yes, so take a picture or go to the mirror or, you know, you can even, you know, put your phone in selfie mode or what have you and turn and look. These days you don't even, if you don't want anybody to see you, you, you know, there's lots of technology that you can check on that and not have anybody involved. <laughs> so if we want to do a little moving in our chair, we're going to, I'll turn to the side so you guys can see me. Let's do a little bit of hinging. So before uh, before we do that, hand on your belly button, tall posture, eyes straight ahead, not chin on your chest. Take a breath in your nose. Let's do a little bit of engage your abs as we breathe in through the nose. Big breath. Now out through the mouth, exhale. And when you exhale, pull your belly button towards your back. So exhale, exhale. The more you push that air out, the more you will feel your abdominals contracting. You might even feel your pelvic floor a little bit engaging as well. Another way to think about that is try to wear or try to imagine you're putting on a pair of uh, jeans that don't have Lycra in them. Like, I don't own any of those anymore. I've thrown those away. <laughs> but, you know, remember when we used to lay on the bed and zip <laughs> and suck it in? So that kind of engagement as you exhale. So you need to put that breathing in there, too, because it'll help you contract these and then you can stay in a safer position. So let's do a little bit of ab work without um, having to end up in this position. So tall, eyes are straight ahead on your inhale through your nose. Go ahead and do it with me. And then as you exhale, zip up, abs in, hinge your spine back, hinge your trunk back until you feel your abdominals, I'm gonna move my hand, turn on and start to support you. You, can, you don't have to go far. Take a breath in as you're holding, and then let, as you come back up, get taller, tall, 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 looking straight ahead. Let's try it again. Exhale, inhale first, and then exhale as you move back. Keep your chest up a little so you don't sink. Stay long, tall and long here. You get a point, to a point where you're like, okay, I'm going to fall backwards if I go any further, but my abs are really engaging. Come back and get taller throw taller up. Let's do one more together. I'm trying to keep my eyes here and not drop my chin. Breathe in. Exhale that air out. As you go back, you'll start to feel your abdominals contract to help support this long position. There's lots of ways to make this harder. We won't do them today by moving arms and legs. And then as you come back up, you're going to get taller, taller, taller. Now let's do what I love rotation because life doesn't just happen here or behind us. Life happens to the side, right? You're in the kitchen washing the, uh, I almost potatoes, but we're not eating those. You're washing your celery. <laughs> and then you turn and you grab something from the counter and you come back. That's where life happens. If we never move in that way, then when we're training, then we lose, we begin to lose the ability to move that way. Have you ever like, called someone's name and instead of them turning their head, they have to turn everything to, to look at you because mm -hmm. they've sort of lost the ability to move up here. So we do a lot of rotation in Pilates. So as you're in your chair, I've got my sit bones, those bony points here. They're planted in there. I'm not going to lift or shift. I'm going to keep them heavy, reach my arms out as if I'm going to touch the opposite walls with my fingers, but I didn't hike. I just soften my shoulders and we're going to go three times around and then we'll come to the other side. So as I rotate, I want you to get taller, breathe in, get taller, keep turning one more time and taller. And then let's come right back. Soften those shoulders and visualize being a barbershop pole. Let's go to the other side. Let's turn, go a little further, maybe soften your shoulders, turn, 
turn one more time and then all the way back to the front and then bring your arms down. Some people have shoulder stuff. They're not using arms. You could turn with a cross position and then the other way. But the idea that as you rotate, you lengthen up from the top of your head versus a turn in a sink. So two really simple things you can do just sitting in your chair to work on that alignment of your spine and also, you know, your posture, adding this in as well. Wonderful. Now, now I'm remembering how we started out our retreats with just some uh, simple things, uh, simple things that are very effective. And I think that's, you know, people that do Pilates, one of the reasons they love it so much is it's so effective at building that core strength without having to do thousands of crunches. And most people think of like, well, crunches are how you build your core, su core support, but there's so much more to it than that. And everyone I've ever heard that's been in Pilates just absolutely just loves it. So uh, I've, I've, I've done it in the past, uh, the place I lived last in Seattle. So probably about two years ago when I moved there, there was a Pilates studio one block from my oh, wow. place. And so I was going five or six days a week for, uh, for, probably six or eight months. And yeah, it, it uh, was much more enjoyable than trying to sit at home and do thousands of crunches. So. <laughs> you know, and, and I love that you brought up crunches because I love to talk about this. I am not, I'm not a huge fan of crunches for this point in my life or the women that I work with in their sixties and seventies. Why do, and there's a couple of reasons, but do we need more positioning like this? And that is, if you're sitting on your back and you were crunching, what are you doing? You're going to mm -hmm. here. Didn't we just say we wanted to get out of that, right? Yeah. For a yeah. lot of people, flex, flexion of their spine, which is this position, um, doesn't feel good because maybe they've got neck or back stuff. Mm -hmm. The other thing that women that are, um, that are, you know, getting into that age 50 and beyond is, Flexion of your spine, if you have a bone loss, osteoporosis or osteopenia in your spine, flexion is contraindicated because oh. it puts you at a greater risk for a fracture of one of your one or more of your vertebra. So yes, you're gonna probably do some flexion in your life because you're gonna tie your shoe and what have you, but excessive crunching or even you've mm -hmm. seen that machine in the this is not bodies, but that machine in the gym where you get in it and then you crunch down with weights on it and stuff really may put you at risk, put your mm. spine at risk, put you um, in not a great position. And there is a good bit of Pilates that can do that to you. I tend to do a lot less flexion with the people that I work with. We get stronger other ways because like I said, you don't need more of this and I don't need my neck to hurt. And a lot of times mm. people try to crunch using their neck and not their abs. <laughs> mm. Ah, makes so much more sense. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, that's excellent. So we've heard today about April's story of uh, following keto and how she chooses to maintain it because it just helps her feel so much better in uh, so many ways. And also her partner, boyfriend's success and health transformation as well. We learned a couple of really easy, um, uh, I don't call them exercises, but movement, yeah. a lot of movements that you can do. Moving, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That you can do even when you're sitting at home all day at your desk or at work. Um, uh, I guess neither of those would work in your car. I was trying to think of where else you could do those very easily, but you go outside you and you're car. Um, oh yeah, without the without or, the arms. There you go. A little forward, you can do a little hinge back, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? Uh, you know, and just in in beginning to wrap this up, like what other things were? Was there anything else you were hoping I would ask about, or that you'd like to share with our viewers, listeners? Um. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. Let me think. If there's anything. Um, I can't think of anything in particular. No. <laughs> Excellent. If anybody well, has any questions. Yeah. Well, uh, so for those of you in the crew, Shirley's posted in uh, under this video, the link to the freebie for a special for our crew members. So grab that. Um, and for anyone else watching this later on on YouTube, um, what? how can people get in contact with you, April? 
So my Facebook page is Fit Women Over 60. Um, I also have a Facebook uh, free community, same name, Facebook, um, sorry, Fit Women Over 60. And if you're on Instagram, I am Pilates for Mature Bodies. And you'll find my email and all of that as well. Ooh, cool. Cool names. Excellent. All right. We'll put those that information in the show notes as well, too. So um, let's see. Oh, here I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, an old school uh, question that I used to do to wrap up my keto chat. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is a fun one. If if uh, the asteroid was coming for the planet uh, today, we were all gonna be wiped out, which is weird because uh, you know we kind of went through something recently where everybody <laughs> thought like, oh, maybe we are gonna be <laughs> wiped out a little bit. Uh, more, you know, more like a, a fiction movie type of, uh, you know, the asteroids coming for the planet. Um, what would you pick as your final meal? Like, what's your like favorite last supper type of thing? <laughs> it's so hard. Um, okay, so you know, I could eat chicken. Okay, this is so like boring. I could eat chicken wings every day. I had chicken wings today. Actually, we smoked some over the weekend. Um, and in Alabama, we have this amazing white barbecue sauce. Made okay. With I was going to ask. Yep. If y'all have not had Alabama white barbecue sauce, you've not lived yet. So um, I think I would probably go with some kind of like crispy skin wings um, dipped in, uh, yeah, white barbecue sauce. <laughs> I know. So boring, right? Maybe a little bit of broccoli on the side. It's so With the it's butter, of course. Okay, so the white barbecue sauce, I from what I know, it's like mayonnaise and vinegar. Is it what yeah. what do you put it's in a, yours? It is. It's a mayonnaise vinegar combo. There's some um a little bit of like garlic powder, onion and onion powder. You can there's all sorts of recipes out there, but it's like a little bit tangy. Um and it is divine. And there are there are great recipes if anybody wants to make it at home. Um, and around here, you can find it in some of the barbecue restaurants. But oh. I make it at home, too, you know, because then I know exactly what's in it. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, because it's harder to find like a non-sugary barbecue sauce at most, at least uh, more in the southwest out here. So, yeah, even, the, you know, nowadays I, there are some out on the shelf. I don't always love, I'm not a big fan of sweet barbecue. Like I like mm -hmm. a vinegar based barbecue and in Alabama, that's not so much a thing. Um, mm -hmm. So the white barbecue sauce is really good. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, thank you so much for being here today, April, and teaching us a couple of things and just coming back and sharing your story with us and, uh, Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, subscribe, like, share. Sharing is caring. Share this with somebody else that you think, uh, you know, is, uh, has a mature body that could use a little more Ooh. movement and uh, quality of life, um, you know, improvement in your flexibility and strength and core health. <laughs> Thank you. I've appreciated uh, joining you again. It's always a blast and uh, good chatting today. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.